Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today is another one of these random talks that I just do in front of my iPhone camera because I, I don't know, I just feel more comfortable talking in front of the iPhone camera and I'm my most lucid and I can just articulate what I have to say a lot better. Um, but this is another one of these talks where I'm just kind of going off a train of thought. And I've wanted to talk about this for a long time because I think that this has never been really answered in a way that's simple enough to kind of just give people that aha moment. Oh, I get it. So why is the art world so obsessed with artwork that seems so devoid of any kind of real meaning? And why does it give off this idea of, of pretension and elitism? Basically, why does the art world prefer this kind of artwork over this kind of artwork. Now, before I even get into it, the art world definitely likes both, but it seems that they profit off of artwork that is way, way more ambiguous than most people desire. Now, I used to be one of these people that said, you know, contemporary art or modern art, postmodern art is full of shit and that it's just uh, a way to get all of these people to just pat themselves on the back and say, oh, we figured out a way to fool all these people into just giving money for something that we spent two seconds on. I used to think that, um, but, and if you are like that, I highly encourage watching some videos on these movements um, and what they mean because they're actually really interesting all of them and most of the work that comes out of it um, even the most seemingly simple work that has come out of these movements are pretty profound and they do deserve recognition however um there's definitely a reason why people hate some of them so much and and i still to this day believe that there are some of them that i just don't I just don't prefer, I don't like, and I think that it could have been maybe executed better, or the idea is just to me, not enough to hang for millions of dollars on white walls in a museum. Um, so basically, I'm gonna tell you right now, the reason why the art world prefers these kind of seemingly bland and uh, very vain artworks is because today, in today's world, People do not want to be spoon fed an idea anymore. It was a long time ago that people and in the salons that it was preferred to show a kind of mastery of craft. It was preferred to show technique and the ability to render something on a piece of parchment or uh, on a canvas in the most realistic way possible to show technique. And this is extremely important. And believe it or not, a lot of the artists that do some of the most abstract works or modern works have had that training. They have had the training that the salon required for such a long time, but they just got bored with it. And so did the world. Over a long period of time, you know, with the impressionists, um, the expressionists, um, with the people that defined the salon, they said, we're done with this. We're, we're so over being so just it, th that it's just all being about craft and, and understanding technique and depicting mythological and biblical stories and archetypes. They were over it. They wanted to transcend and to depict the more abstract feelings that people had, okay? I'm not going to go into like what each movement means. I'm not going to tell you about the impressionists or the modern movement or the postmodern. I'm not going to tell you about those things because there's so many videos about them and it's pretty self-explanatory once you just see a sentence about each movement, what they meant. But I'm basically just telling you that today, which there's a lot of really cool art today and there's many different movements all going on simultaneously that do involve a lot of that technique um, and are more detailed. Um, but the reason why these 
galleries, these white wall galleries where people are spending millions of dollars on these really, really empty looking paintings or extremely simple works. It's because they want something more. They want people to be able to come into the gallery and practically fight over what these paintings mean. Because the whole point of art, today especially, is to depict the variation of experience um, and then to kind of settle down and understand more so the experience of the artist and what they're trying to say. And so when these people are coming in and they have their champagne and they're looking at a painting and they're discussing what they think about it, that's the whole point of art is to have a kind of discussion is for there to be a symposium over what these works mean. And the more ambiguous, the better because then the conversation lasts longer. There's more thought that goes into it. There's more research that goes into it. It sparks a conversation that spans across countries and different cultures. So the more ambiguous the artwork, the better. And this also goes towards um, this idea that you need a certain amount of experience or a certain amount of education on artwork to understand these kinds of artworks. I think some people just know. I think some people are really good at just spotting work that's simply good. They kind of have this like gene for detecting that. Um, but a lot of people, including myself, I needed to be educated. I think most people need to be educated on the art movements, the design movements, and what they meant for, for history and the countries in which they occurred in at the time. These, you need an education to understand a lot of these works and why they're so important and why this textured white canvas, you know, changed an entire generation or whatever. You need to know the context. You need to know what the artist's past works were or maybe what their entire manifesto was about, what guild they came from, things like that. You need to have a little bit of understanding of history and art history to look at this and say, oh, okay, that makes sense. And actually, wow, damn, that's actually pretty cool. I've had those moments all the time. I, I take a first glance at something. I'm like, this is so stupid. Like, this is an insult to intelligence. Um, and then I read the caption. I'm like, oh. I'm glad I wasn't talking to anybody because like I would have surely embarrassed myself with how little I knew. Am I saying that this is, this is it? That's the best case scenario. There is definitely artwork out there for chummy, pretentious, condescending people. And those people love to boast about their, about their knowledge and, and their interpretation of the work and all of this, there is a huge market for that. And I think that in addition to the, the beauty of a lot of these works that are good, it just kind of adds an extra dimension to these works that the most pretentious people will spend the most money on it just because of their own ego, um, which I love. I think that's great. I mean, Andy Warhol said it first, you know, he said, uh, art is what you can get away with. And I think he's definitely one of the most prolific, not prolific, he's definitely one of the most, one of the most genius artists out there because he, he did that. He mocked the art world in a way with that saying. Uh, people will spend money on what they think they should spend money on or what, whatever, whatever gets them the most recognition or whatever boosts their ego. Um, also, Andy Warhol did make his own artwork, by the way. There's this saying going around, like, Andy Warhol never did anything. He did do things, maybe not so much later in his career, but he, he did make much, a lot of artwork throughout his life. Anyway, but it's, it's just that. Uh, that. That portion of this is just kind of like, it really is what you can get away with and what people will kind of mull over and try and understand and... Whatever keeps the person talking and thinking and the, and the booze flowing is better for business. It's better for, and it's better for the culture, I think. But there definitely is this, you know, air of elitism that comes 
with these galleries that comes with these works, which sucks. Yes, you need to know what these artworks mean, what the context is, and that there is a certain amount of education that I think is required um, to understand these artworks and not everyone can get it. Not everyone understands how wonderful some of these pieces are. So it is, it is elitist in that way, but it is also in a bad way, like they, like they don't want you to understand. It's almost like they want to sieve out the people that are too ignorant to understand the work and leave you with this pool of people, this maybe highly educated, maybe extremely um, egotistical people that, that do understand or pretend to understand anyway. I mean, the, the best thing you can say at a gallery is I'm still, I'm still trying to, to digest this. Something like that, just, just the most, with a vague work, giving a very vague answer, answer is the best way to start the conversation because at least you're not judging it upon looking at it. Anyway, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That is why the art world does that. The art world wants something that's difficult to understand. They want to push the boundaries, um, but at the same, uh, push boundaries as in like open up the conversation to more perspectives, but they also want to close it off in a way too. And they want only certain people to, to get it, to really understand it and appreciate it, which adds value to the artwork. So, and this is not just in the art world. I guess I'll conclude with that. I think as a society, we are going towards more ambiguous ideas, concepts, lifestyles, and philosophies in general. I think we want more from life. I think as human beings, we're just progressing to things that are less simple. Things that are, things that have an air of mystery around them. And I love that. I think it can be really toxic at the same time because there's nothing worse than an undecided person, but that's where we're going. And, and this kind of artwork directly reflects what I just said. It directly reflects the culture, our time, the history, and it will be written down what this means for us and what this meant for the galleries at the time. That being said, there's a lot of artwork that is extremely detailed and, you know, really thought out. And you can see that, you know, on the canvas or with the sculpture that you're looking at. You can see that. There's, it's still there. There's tons of it. Um, so do not fret. The art world definitely does accept those kinds of things. So yeah, that's why that silly white textured painting is more widely accepted than a very, you know, arduously created, you know, pen drawing that took 30 hours or something like that. That's why uh, they want, the world wants something that requires a little bit more effort, that requires more intelligence, that, that requires a higher sensitivity to things. We all, we all want something more from life, basically. So, all right. I think I said that in the best way that I possibly could. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you guys next Wednesday. Bye.